Peter Sulsky, and I'm really happy to be here today. Um, a faculty member at um, College of the Holy Cross, and we are here on the campus of College of the Holy Cross during their Parents Weekend, which of course happens all over colleges, all over Worcester. And um, I'm a, a viola player and a violinist, and I say a general musician in terms of pulling together other musicians as well to do um, really, really interesting things in Worcester and, and elsewhere. Um, wherever I go, I play, have to play a different role. Um, my biggest role here in Worcester, of course, is as artistic director of the Worcester Chamber Music Society. And I've been fortunate enough to um, speak with, uh, I have interviews before here and on Channel 13, so it's wonderful to be talking to you all from here. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand is what goes on, how much goes on in Worcester. So what I want to just describe a little bit here, at least, is what we're doing here. Like I said, I call it the Holy Cross. Um, I teach uh, violin and viola and chamber music, and uh, the chairman of the, our, our department is Sharice Corday. And I'm about to actually go up and play a concert. I'm going to be sitting at the back of the second violins, um, which is just fine with me, even though I used to play viola in the London Symphony Orchestra. It has nothing to do with anything in terms of hierarchy, um, because I'm there to support the students. You know, it's an exciting time for them. It's their second concert of the semester. We'll be playing a Mozart symphony. Um, we're lucky there's no football game this weekend, so uh, we get most of the attention. The hall is practically full, and I'll be running up there in a few minutes, of course. Um, previously this morning, I was over at All Saints Church, which may, 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 many people may know, which is on Irving Street near the school, the Central School Administration Building. And this is one of the most historic churches with one of the most historic organs in the country, and people don't even realize it. It's incredible what goes on there. Tomorrow is All Saints Day, and of course it being All Saints Church, um, they always um, make a bit, bit of a splash, so I've hired three or five, four of my colleagues to come in and play some wonderful concerts, or a, a wonderful mass with them, and some other pieces. So we rehearsed this morning. And before that, I was on the west side of Worcester with two wonderful friends of mine, um, playing chamber music with them um, at the unsightly hour of 8.30 in the morning. Uh, they're wonderful people who, who support and who love to play chamber music. One is a cellist and one is a flute player. Um, and they uh, support all of our concerts at the Worcester Chamber Music Society. And so you can see, just even from my morning, which will be, my day will be done soon, I'm not going to keep going, is um, you know, th there's a lot going on and a lot of people interested in making music here in Worcester. Um, I think in terms of what else we see going on, I mean, that's, uh, the, there'll be other subjects that we talk about, but I think what's most important for people to realize is not just up here at Holy Cross, College of the Holy Cross, but at Clark University, at uh, Anna Maria, all the major colleges in the area, WPI. Mr. Doug Weeks, for instance, who's playing trombone upstairs in a minute, is the uh, musical administrator at WPI. Um, we're all connected, we're all trying to uh, keep a vibrant, you know, musical life, not just for the students of the colleges here, but also in the community. Um, a few years ago, we had a chamber orchestra, which uh, we proved artistically could exist, and uh, so many of us want to see Mechanics Hall full of a, or to regularly have a, a local orchestra here. Um, and we've realized that we just need to pull together more support, and also, of course, create an incredible youth system, which is really what it's all about, because as far as I'm concerned, any child um, should have access to music in the schools. I'm touch, talking, touching on a lot of subjects right now, of course, but um, these are things that need to be talked about. They need to be talked about in Worcester. And why do they need to be talked about? It's basically what I grew up at in the Worcester elementary schools and also the high schools. Um, with Darden Memorial High School, we had free stream programs. We had access. and. Also, there were lessons for people who wanted to take piano and woodwinds. And there's still a lot of that going on, but it's been decimated. Or it's, it's a far cry from what it used to be. The result is, is that not enough young musicians or would-be musicians get support. And we're not talking about turning everybody into a professional musician. There's no room in the profession. We're not talking along those lines. We're talking about teaching children, allowing them to express themselves, learn a different language called the language of music, to learn how to um, be in company, to be in community, that's what a youth orchestra is, of course, to um, 
learn how to express the mathematics of music and at the same time the poetry of music. It encompasses so many different things, just as an, as an addition to the quality of one's life. And also, it's incredibly creative. And also, lastly, it involves hand-eye coordination, playing a violin, playing an oboe, playing a flute, which I'm not doing very well because I don't do. I just don't play. So there's a bigger, bigger picture here, and I'm hoping in this interview and others to talk about what can be done and know that there are a lot of us pulling for the same thing and we need to keep pulling together to make good things happen. Thank you.